Based on her symptoms and history, it is likely that the patient has acute pancreatitis. This is characterized by an inflammation of the pancreas that appears suddenly and lasts for days. The two main causes of pancreatitis in the U.S. are alcohol intake and gallstones. The patient has no history of alcoholism to suggest alcoholic pancreatitis. Therefore, the next test to obtain at this time is choice A, an ultrasound of the abdomen, to look for gallstones and to see if there is dilatation of the common bile duct. Let's go through the other choices. Choice B, CT of the abdomen and pelvis with contrast, should be done 48 to 72 hours after the ultrasound if the patient's pancreatitis is not improving. This would be done to look for complications like necrosis, pseudocyst, or abscess formation. Choice C, ERCP, is an invasive procedure and should not be done if there is no suggestion of common bile duct dilatation on ultrasound. However, if there is dilatation, an ERCP may be performed. We want to perform a non-invasive investigation before performing an invasive procedure, which is why an ultrasound should be ordered first. Doing an ERCP first is also not recommended because the ERCP can sometimes exacerbate the pancreatitis. Choice D, MRCP, is incorrect. Such an extensive diagnostic test is not required before performing an ultrasound, which also yields high information about the right upper quadrant. Choice E, endoscopic ultrasound, would be done if there was evidence of a pancreatic mass. This investigation is not necessary at this time. Again, alcohol and gallstones are the top two causes of pancreatitis. The well-known mnemonic, I get smashed, can help you remember the major causes of pancreatitis. The I stands for idiopathic, G gallstones, E ethanol, T trauma, S steroids, M for mumps or malignancies such as a pancreatic cancer, A for autoimmune pancreatitis, S for scorpion sting, H for hypercalcemia or hypertriglyceridemia, E for ERCP, and D for drugs such as thiazide diuretics.